So good afternoon. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name's Rowan, and um, today we're going to talk about J2 Store. I do want to say that I don't work for them. I just found this product and I've started building all my e-commerce sites with it. A um, bit about me. I've been building things with Genius since version 1. Um, I've run my own business selling products online using a Joomla e-commerce site and I've built and maintained sites for many different clients in different sectors. In 2006 I decided that I didn't really want to do web full time and I found a fantastic skincare product from the States that I bought to the UK. Now obviously I only did a website for it and when I started looking for components there were the simplest ones and things designed to handle 10,000 products and nothing in between. I had four products, three shipping rates and one payment method. I needed something more than a buy now button, but I didn't need a full brand car. I chose Virtumart and it was a really steep learning curve and if I hadn't been building websites, I don't think I would have got there. Um, but once I'd learned it, it ran my site beautifully um, and I went on to build loads more. Well, sorry. But there was always a voice in the back of my head that said, this, it, there must be a simpler way of doing this. You had to learn a whole, near and near from that whole new CMS when you install one of these products and move all of your content into it. Um, then I found J2 Store about a year and a half ago and things changed. So, what is J2 Store? It's a Swiss Army knife e-commerce extension that is simple at its core, but fully extensible. It can turn your existing content into products quickly without the need to move content into another component. J2 Store can currently integrate into all of these components, and I know that they're adding more as they find them. I've only actually worked with Con Content. Um, I've heard good things about Sophie Pro. Is he gone? He's gone. Um, and also, I've seen it used in K2 too. There's a free version of J2 Store available that will give you all the basic features um, and comes with Sage Pay, pay Mail and offline payment methods. Um, and you can buy a PayPal plugin for 10 bucks. Um, if you only need select and radio button custom fields and you don't need to manage stock or offer vouchers and discounts, the free version will do everything you need. Um, the pro version adds a lot more custom fields and opens up the support. Um, and I have to say that their support is fantastic. J2 store installs like a normal component. Its configuration can take 10 minutes if you've got all the information you need. Um, it's very flexible, <coughs> Bootstrap and jQuery. It will support both Bootstrap 2 and 3. Um, and it's been designed to blend into the existing template as easily as possible. Um, I'm going to walk through all of the um, setting fields to just give you an idea of how easy it is to set up. So, first tab, you have your basic settings, which is mostly your CSS and JavaScript control. Um, it will allow you to load full bootstrap. It's also got a minimal bootstrap file that just tweaks the cart enough to make it look great at the box first time. Um, it will flip between bootstrap 2 and 3. You can choose who views the cart. You can have it available to only registered users and your date format, and if you're selling downloadable goods, the folder path, where those files are going to be stored. Ooh. Doesn't help that I'm shaking and trying to change it. Um, the next tab gives you the store configuration. You can set multiple administrative emails up, so if you've got a dropshipping company, you can get an email, they can get an email. 
Um, I'll go into their email system in a bit more detail in a minute. Um, and your basic store information. Once you've set your country, all of the language settings catch up. So initially it will come <coughs> as being um, in the United States, so you'll see zip codes instead of postcodes. But once you've done this, everything will, will, will go to EMGB or German or French or Spanish or whichever language you want to use. Next up, you configure the basic um, options for your products. You can use it in catalogue mode, so no ad cart buttons shown. Um, whether you show the SKU, manufacturers and brands, quantity field, pricing, um, and number of columns for your cross sells and upsells. The next tab, <coughs> I've skipped inventory because it's not in free version and stock control is probably a presentation on its own. Um, next up is tax. Out of the box, you've got different tax rates. There's also a paid FATMOS plugin, which I've helped to extend now so that it doesn't just look at digital goods and downloadable goods and services. It will also look at um, one of my customers sells courses in the UK but they um, sell to people all over Europe. And the normal fat change doesn't happen because they're actually buying something that they will have in the UK. So it's now that flexible that a service in country is an option. Um, the next tab. Ooh. Next tab deals with your card. Um, Discount also, that's in the pro version, vouchers and, and coupons. Um, this deals with where um, the ad cart will go. You can have it either in the default position, which will be at the end of an article. Um, you can tell it that you only want it to be displayed in articles when you use the short code tag, which we'll see in a minute, or both. So you can have it set to display, but you can also drop it into a different, so if you've got a very long product description, you can have it at the bottom, but you can also have add to cart buttons put throughout. Um, configuring your continue shopping URL, your default button class. Now you can do this per product, and you can also change the wording per product on the button. So for example, I've got um, a customer who sells physical courses and online courses. His, on, his physical courses are book now, his online courses are buy now. <coughs> it gives you a lot of flexibility. Um, <coughs> you have full guest checkout as well. Um, and also whether you show the product thumbnails and, and taxes. And, um, and you can also disable shipping completely. <coughs> so if you're only doing digital goods, all those shipping fields just go. Yeah, you can do a mixture, but you need a bit of overriding to hide it when you only have something down there to put in the card. So you, you turn shipping on and off for each individual product, but if you were just selling software licenses, for example, and never going to post something, you can just save the whole thing. You've got complete control over the um, layout of the checkout, billing addresses, and shipping addresses. So when you add custom user fields, you can drop these in without going into a template override. You do this all in here. Um, it gives you a default output, which is Bootstrap 2. Um, the site that I took this off is 3, so obviously I've edited it. And then next up are some basic order details. You can set your invoice prefix, show um, a link to order history after payment, um, have a downloads tab if you're selling um, software licenses. You can turn that on and off because if you're selling physical goods, it wouldn't make any sense to the customer. Um, and then the last field is for your terms and conditions, um, which just links to a standard con content article. And that's pretty much all the basic configuration. And as I said, if you've got all the information, you can flip through this in one to ten minutes.
minutes. Um, next up, <coughs> the custom user, user fields that I talked about a minute ago. Um, it comes with all the normal fields already set up for you, um, but you can create any of these types as additional fields and call them in your checkout. These are the custom fields for you. As you can see, you can tell immediately which are core and which aren't. Um, you can enable and disable them in one click. And as I said, they are hugely configurable. Um, you can set them to be read-only. Um, and you can choose where they're displayed, uh, whether they're required or not. And once they're saved, you just call them with the field name in, in the templates. Um, the, free ver the pro version has a lot of custom fields, um, uh, sorry, options for product options. You get select and radio for the free version. Um, and, but with both versions, you can chain products and have dependencies. So if you say yes on one option, another option will appear and it changes down the line. There's a few on a site. Um, each one must have a unique name. The display presentation field is what the end user will see. That'll be the label. Um, you've got to drop down for types and whether it's published. The value goes in the left. You can have an image for each value. So if you've got a red and a blue and a black and a, and a white, you can put that in here. And there's basic ordering. This, funny enough, is something that I um, asked them to put into J2 Store because it was one thing they were lacking in their product views. So these are only visible when you use J2 Store's menu items, which I'll get to in a minute. But they will give you filters on the left hand side, so glass, acrylic, wood. Not using for colours and variations, but just allowing users to filter in and get into the products that they want to find. Well, there's a reason I don't use this touchpad. Um, they're very simple to, to set up, very basic. You can add and remove them. You have no email and invoice templating with the version, but the output is actually really quite good. It's, it's got everything. But when in the pro version, it opens these up, and you can either use a simple editor and just drag in field markers to lay it out, or you can use a PHP file and do pretty much whatever you like. Um, we've done some quite interesting things with, with, with PHP files and templates and sending off to macros of ancient systems and them actually understanding what we were sending them. So here's a quick look. These are the basic settings for a t an email template. Invoice templates are the same. Um, who receives it? What language it's in? What status of order it should be sent at? Um, which user groups as well? So you can customise emails to high heaven. Um, the subject line and what you want to use. Um, a simple editor or a PHP file. And when you choose the PHP file, you can then go and tell it which one to look for. On the simple editor, you've got all your short codes and you can lay it out however you like. The, these are, the, the, all these plugins, um, the shipping and payment methods, you can access them through J2 Store, but they're all just plugins. They're just all standard Joomla plugins. Um, I believe, when I counted quickly, I think there's 65 payment methods. Um, there's eight shipping plugins. Um, there's also standard ones, and new ones are being added all the time. <coughs> Yeah.
Here's a quick overview of these. Um, you can enable and disable them, and um, you can get to them from J2 Store, as I said, through Plugin Manager itself. Now, we've, we've set up J2 Store, and now we need to create our first product. Um, when you open or create a new article, you'll see a new tab that says J2 Store. Um, this is where all your product configuration takes place. You don't spend a lot of time in J2 it's Store itself, other than checking on orders and the configuration we've just been through. Everything is in the item. Um, the first thing you need to do is tell J2 Store that, that you want this item to be a product. And if it's a new article, the minimum you must have is a title. Because when you hit that save and continue button, it will actually save and refresh. It sets up all of the tables and everything else. The next step is to choose what type of product. Now, you have simple, configurable, variable, and downloadable. Um, I'm going to walk you through a simple product, oh, and configurable, um, which allows you to have stacked options. You can change the product type, but when you do that, everything you've configured further down goes because it creates a brand new product. So use that one with caution. So once, oh boy. so once you've chosen the product type, you start going into the settings. This is the first one, the general setting, and you tell it whether it's visible in the storefront or not. You can turn products on and off. So maybe you want to sell something for a while and then stop selling it. You can turn it off. All that data is still there, but all of the cart functions gone on that article. Um, Standard e-commerce stuff, your SKU, um, other codes, brand, manufacturer, tax profile, and as I mentioned earlier, what you want to cut button for that product to say. Then you go through your pricing. Um, there is some really advanced pricing available, but again, I think that would probably take me about half an hour to explain. Um, Images. Now, you can use J2 Store and just use Compound Content Articles, um, menu items, but you can also have additional images. So you can use the normal tumular images, you can have additional product images too, or you can just use these. You can add as many as you, <coughs> as you like. Um, Next up is shipping. Um, you can enable it and disable it for products, as I said earlier. If it's digital, when, is there a selection for <coughs> product or not? When you, when you choose a downloadable product, these options change. So okay, shipping right, goes away, Sorry. And files come in. Um, and you wouldn't see shipping on a downloadable product. That option would be no. gone. That option would be gone, and files comes in instead of it. And that's where you set your files. Um, I haven't done any slides on downloadable and configurable products because I don't think I have time. Um, but I can show you if you want later on. Um, you can also have uh, maybe a teaser document that people can download for free in a downloadable product, and then pay for one. So you can have multiple files in a product some with the charge, some without. Also, you can differ the prices as well. Options are quite complex. Um, you simply, with these two, they're autocomplete fields. So you start typing the first few characters of the option's name, and up, they come, up comes the list, and you choose them. And then you can go in and um, configure them, um, plus or minus prices, plus or minus weights, and order them. Same with filters and specifications. Simply start typing and you can fill those in. And with relations you can choose upsells and cross-sells and associate products, other products to this one. 
apps is very rarely used. The site that I took this from does have a, a, a custom app. Most of the apps are configured within J2 Store. Once in a while, an app might actually go down to the product level and there'll be a setting in there. So the next thing is setting up your menu items. You've got five menu item types. Cart, checkout, my profile, which is my account. Um, products list view and a thank you page. Um, for basic operation, you actually only need the first three because if you've got an existing site and you wanted to productize your articles, you could just use your menu items that are there and have an account card for checkout. The products list view we'll go into in a minute. Um, this is where you start to see more of an online store um, in the front end. You can choose your categories. And then your common options. You can <coughs> choose a sub-template from the overrides folder. Choose which order the articles are, uh, uh, appear in. Classes for that menu item for the options and, and, and cart buttons. Whether you show the quantity field, product, op product option price. And you can also put some custom CSS code that will be in the head just for that page. Here is the number of items to display. Well, it's category listing, so number of items to display, number of columns, how deep you want to go into the subcategories, and various different switches. Similar to your category blog view, but obviously talking about products. Next up is the actual item view. Now, they're trying to figure out how to be able to create a single item menu item. But they haven't managed to quite figure it out because they're tapping into other people's content. Um, so you, you have a view of an individual item, but you can only click through it from a category view. It's a drawback, and they're working really, really hard to fix it. But for an end user, it doesn't really make a lot of difference because you're, you're clicking through. Um, you can also still use standard articles. Next up is the short code plugin, which you can use pretty much anywhere. <coughs> um, you can set whether the options, whether you show options and the cart button, or whether you have a more info button. Um, whether you're going to display the image, <coughs> where that product plot goes in, the, in an article, top or bottom, or both. Um, whether you link the image to the product, whether you enable zoom, and how big you, you want the thumbnail to be in category view. And then you have an item view as well, where you want the buttons, um, whether you want to display the images, etc. This is where my slide deck went a little wrong this morning because I wanted to use an example. And although I know the website isn't down, I couldn't for the life of me load, I couldn't load the knowledge tray. On. So we're now going to go to Chihuahuas because that's the only other one that came to the top of my head. This is quite a basic output um, of a category listing page using J2 Store. Um, at this view, you can hide and, and display the prices and the buttons and everything else. Um, so you could display default. Is that default with display? But you can set that per menu item. So you can have a one column layout, you can have a three column layout, you can have a six column layout. That's all down to the menu item. That's all set in there. Um, and that's a very basic product view. Um, because she hasn't added any content. That's the cart view. 
this was pretty much out of the box, um, the way this looked. And it's one page checkout as, de as default. Um, So you, kind of, you look at it initially and you think, this is an awful lot of files. And then you realize that actually everything's in small bites. And rather than having something this long, where you may be jumping about in what you're doing, and then it's not working and you have to figure out, at least if you're working in compartmentalized files, you know that it was that one. Um, and that is pretty much all I had time to build this morning. Um, <laughs> Can you do CSV uploads? Yes. Uploads, yeah. yeah, that's built in and free. Um, I'm in the middle of creating a workshop for a customer of mine. He's selling beds and exercise, accessories. Um, and one of the products is a mattress. There is an option uh, which has to be firm or soft. So it doesn't change the price, but the size does. Is that possible? S as it, size as in for shipping? No, or size for the mattress, one person mattress, two person mattress. Okay, so you have an option that is whether you want a firm one mm -hmm. or, or a medium one. Yeah, that doesn't change the price. That doesn't change the price. But whether it's a single, a double, every option, when you set them up, you have the, you can just, you have price modifiers and weight modifiers, mm -hmm. plus and minus, and you set them up for each option. So medium and firm wouldn't do anything, mm -hmm. um, but when you choose single or double, that would update the price. You may have answered this already, but when you're checking out and you've got a digital product and a physical product, so that would If you're in the EU, that that mouse plug-in really, really helps with that. But yes, it will, you know, it will only calculate Shipping on the way that you've put in as the physical products and the downloadable product will be calculated separately and then it's all brought together in. Can you do customer groups? They're just user groups. They're user groups, yeah. Okay. And can you then do pricing based off of the user groups? Yeah. Okay. Discount. Yeah, discounts. Or Yeah, discounts or with VAT, discounts without VAT. That's on this site actually. She has um, she has a membership club. Right. And products and prices change <coughs> when you're logged in and you're an active member. Right, um, so you get a discount because you can get if you bought five times books, yeah. That's the one thing he doesn't have yet. Um, he's working on it. For but I keep on giving him lists of things that would be good. <laughs> um, so loyalty points aren't in there, discount vouchers and coupons are. So in a, in a big product like the mattresses, is that just going under one article of options for stock control? Can you yeah, it was inventory is, is a, in, inventory is <coughs> a... But each option can have its own yeah. SKU. Each option can have its own SKU. You can, you can have a variable product as well, so you can start creating child variants and all sorts. So you can use those options to hang off those for stock control. So the, the main, the original article, does that become like a placeholder? Well, no, the original article is still the article. Um, the call to the car just drops into the article. So your description and how you lay out that article are completely up to you. And then Dave's two store will just add everything else. If you kind of think, if you want to think about it, your intro text is your brief description, your main <coughs> text is your full description, um, and then the product stuff comes comes on top. So in Magento, for example, with a configurable product, you have like a pairing product, and then each variant is a simple product. Yeah. So if it's a t-shirt, a sock, you can end up with 
you know, 100 simple products. But what you then do is you hide them. This is kind of how this works. Yeah, so the search engines only ever see the one pairing product. And then, of course, as you change the... the it's exactly the how this works. Yeah. That's going to be next question. Just the URL to change. You need to select red, no. large t shirt. No, just still what gets sent to the cart, how much it costs, how much it weighs, and what it's going to cost to ship. Yeah. So the customer is getting a single URL, which is jab t shirt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's a fact you've chosen blue, the XYZ size. That gets pushed through into the cart. And um, also, if you've got stuff that, if you've got a uh, dependent field, so if you've got a yes no question, yeah and you say no, but nothing happens, you say yes, then maybe uh, an upload field turns up because you know, if you want to add a logo to your t-shirt, yes, that will come up, then you can do that, and then maybe there's another question related underneath it, and you can, you can change it, it's quite considerable. On the checkout, is there uh, a customer comment field like, you know, leave in the port? Yeah, there's a, there's a leave a note field, you can turn that on and off. Um, and obviously with those user fields that I showed you earlier, you can add pretty much anything into the cart and you can add it at the billing point, the shipping point, or the payment point. It, I, I, it's really easy to build it. So you never go back to the you <laughs> You missed the bit where I was being fair. I, if somebody had something that had something that big, then I would look at one of the bigger cards. cards. But for someone with 20, 30 products, or in my case, when, when you know, I have four, you don't really need the 16-wheeler when you could get there on a bicycle, not the same note. Is there a limit on it you would think it's got huge things? I've stress-tested knowledge trait, and that's and we've developed. Done. They've got about 80, but the configuration and all the jumping through hoops that that does, it works really well. So I don't think, I think it's just, it's going to be database table yeah, size and stuff. Of There's a few actually, let me, um, if you go and look at their showcase, they've got some quite amazing sites that make mine look awful um, on J2 Store. And there's ones with thousands of products in there. <coughs> we see with Magento, for example, if, if you're on the community edition, if you get up to about 70 or 80,000 products, you stop grinding. Yeah, because the index is never finished and all this kind of thing. So the, the, the rule of thumb is that if you get in here, there you have to go with the enterprise. Um, and also, if you, yeah, if turnover is over, say, a million a year, the suggestion is you go enterprise, partly because it's the business. So I'd be surprised if this could handle that kind of product size data. I think that would probably be hard. too much for it, yeah. But then it's too much for the gentleman. Yeah. Also, the How is the number of files looks like? Yeah. But you see, if you don't own a t-shirt shop and you've got 100 t-shirts designs and they come in 10 colours and 5 sizes, can someone do the math? It's quite a lot of products, if they're uh, yeah, individual products. Yeah. So while it looks like you've only got a small catalogue, you could actually have thousands of products in the same. That wouldn't be that wouldn't be too too much of an issue because you're not creating any new article with each one. Oh yeah, it's the actual. So it's yeah. it's one row in a table. Right, yeah. And um, but it would still stop take on that level. Right? Yeah. Okay. You use the same screen. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Because <coughs> um, I, funnily enough, this was Mijo Shop, which I liked for a while and then went off big time. Um, and I migrated that. There's migrators for Virtual Mark, migrators for High Club, there's migrators for Mijo. It's migrators for Virtual Mark. Mm -hmm. I've done that. Mm -hmm. And um, it depends on the quality of the data in the Virtual Mark <coughs> Shop as to what happens. I had something really clean go really well, and I had something that had to pack into VM, tidy up. Not VM's fault, client's fault, tidy up and then bring it. 
you said about integrating with the Sobe Pro as well. So I just I haven't built anything in the Sobe that's so a, a product you, yet. So, so, you know, could you use this then to <coughs> pay for some sort of membership or feature directories? To, to so how it works? No, no, that's built into Sobe Pro already. What this will do is you let you list your products in Sobe Pro with the custom fields and everything else, and then add a card to the bottom. Right. Well, we are going to look at that. I actually never took out a deeper look at the integration between Sobe Pro and Jake to I installed it once and it was projectable pretty well. Do you just get an extra tab like you do it on Compact? No, you, yeah, you, you can put a button somewhere depending on when you put it. But when button. you're in a listing, yeah. okay, do you have an extra tab like. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that just comes up and it's the same yeah, thing. Yeah. 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 So, sorry, you don't have to activate the plugin. It's a plugin for that. You, well, it, default comes with ComContent, and then they're all free for other ones. You just need to put in the, the apps or, or the other ones. So it's not loading everything, you just choose what you want. To That's work. what's great. I mean, yeah. Yeah. when I first looked at it, I thought, okay, maybe this is too simple. And then you start, and, but that was the whole point. That's what they wanted to do. They wanted to give you something simple and then let you pick and choose, and I'm a huge fan. Flies on PHP 7 much faster. Okay. Oh, it's PHP 7 already? Mm -hmm. It was, uh, I think, the day after 3 5 came out. Mm -hmm. I'm Does Virtual run on PHP 7?